Okay, Ben. So let me get this straight. You spent $5,000 that you just got from your sister in order to bail the man that you hate out of prison so that you can take a car and do some type of drag race thing going down so that you'll be able to kill him and yourself. Hmm. What a brilliant idea. now tuned in to my haves and have nots recap guys be sure to subscribe if you have not yet done so also be sure to share this video on Google Facebook Twitter wherever you like to share videos okay and don't forget to give it that good old thumbs up you can do it now okay so now that we've done all of that let's get into this recap so we start off with Candace she's continuing on with this what I would call a hoax because what she's doing is she's pretending that she is a lawyer, she's attorney at law, and she's getting Maggie and David involved so that she can prove to her brother Benny that she is actually an attorney. So she gets Maggie to pretend like she's her assistant and she's talking all rude to Maggie like, oh, why are you late? You should have been here already. You address him as Mr. Young. Where's my coffee? Like, she was going in. I was like, girl, Maggie, you got some patience. You are down for the team, girl. You are ride or die. Because couldn't nobody be talking to me like that if I'm a boss chick. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Maggie's trying to subtly let her know that the actual partners are down the hall. She doesn't want to get caught up in this. So hurry up and get out of the place before they catch her. And she's just like, we'll handle it. Take care of it. And little do you know, a little bit later after that, one of the partners actually does walk in. And she's like, what's going on here? But Candace just walks off as though it's nothing and leaves Maggie to kind of fix it. Fix it, boo. So now we find out another little secret is that while Benny and, and his sister Candace were talking when they go back to the shop, she reveals that she was actually the one that bought her mother the car, even though he kind of bought it. She set it all up where that chick Erica came to him, pretended like she just wanted to get rid of the car, and I guess she knew that he would give it to their mom. and that that was really the only way that she could get to give her mother a car because her mother wouldn't take anything from her. So it's funny that she really does have a heart, you know? She really does care about her mother despite everything. I guess that's that's just like last um a few episodes ago where we saw that her mother had defended her. Blood runs thicker than water and at the end of the day that's your flesh and blood. So despite all the problems that you may have, I always do this, right? Despite all the problems that the two of you may have, you still are gonna do what you can to help that person somehow, some way. At least that's what it seems in their case. So when they go back to the shop and everything, they're chit-chatting and everything, and Veronica pulls up. And it's odd because she just like randomly comes there and they're like, what is she doing here? So she, she tries to cover her tracks and say that she was looking for the old people that worked there because I think she said they were her clients. But at the end of the day, she was trying to find out about the car, the car that What's his name that White was driving? Jim, he reveals to Catherine, it's a night of reveals, he reveals to Catherine that White is in the jail, he's learning his lesson, and she's just like, do you really think that's a good idea? And he's just like, don't worry about it, babe. I got it covered. There are a whole bunch of guards, they're watching him. But all the things that's going on in there, I'm just like, is this real? Or are they just trying to scare him? Because it's like there's this one big dude that is sharing a, a cell with him and the dude is like pulling pushing up on him trying to rape him trying to grab him up and luckily the the guards was coming in like go oh, chill out stop with that you know what's gonna happen to you if you don't leave him alone but every time the guards leave it's like he keep on trying to push up on him and did you guys notice the fight scenes are getting pretty better like they look more realistic like when they were throwing the blows throwing the punches it, it kind of reminded me of like the Kung Fu or the Ninja Warrior type of films where they'd be like, hey -ya! And it, it just, the way that the flashbacks were for the, um, the special effects were for the punches. They were, I guess they're trying to make them look more realistic. It looks pretty cool though. I can't complain. 
So yeah, that's what was going down. And then I'm like, is that part of the plan? Does Jim know about this? Is this guy going to really get him? What the heck is going on? David and Jim, they're talking. They're having like a bro moment. And Jim is actually realizing how much of a horrible dad he's been. He's like, when this dude, White, was getting raped. Yeah, yeah, go figure. But look what's happening to him now. Was getting raped. He didn't find out until after because he was so busy and so involved with Celine at the time. He wasn't even thinking about him. He didn't know anything was going on until it was too late. And I'm like, hmm. And then he also says that with Amanda, he feels like he could have helped her. And now he finds out that it was he feels kind of like it was his fault. So yeah, he's a pretty crappy dad. He's done a lot of bad things to the people that he's supposed to love the most, his offspring, and and his wife. I mean, you cheat on her all the time. How many numbers does she count? She knows about all of them? Seriously, dude? So that's the type of thing that he was saying. And David gave him some good advice. And David was just like, you know, at the end of the day, it's what you do now that really counts. But I'm like... Hold on, if it's what he does now that's really counting, then how the hell he have his son in the freaking prison about to get j freaking raped? That's how, that's how you make things count? That's kind of crazy if you ask me. I don't know, the way people do what they do. I mean, it wasn't too much that went down. The only other thing that I'm going to talk about real briefly is the fact that Benny, he bailed Quincy out of prison and he paid... $5,000. His sister had just gave him $10,000 when he asked for $5,000. And now he's using $5,000 of that to, I would call it, commit suicide. Because he goes, he gets Quincy out of jail and tells him to come for a ride with him. He's like, you scared? He's like, nah, I ain't scared. Tells him don't put on his seatbelt. He starts driving. He starts driving super fast. The thing going all the way up to 100 is going faster and faster. And Quincy, at first, he wasn't flinching. But then I think he realized, like, hold on, hold on. This man is not stopping. He's going as fast as he can go. He's, he is putting his foot to the metal, the pedal to the metal. He is going. And it, he's just driving into the darkness. So then Quincy's like, wait, hold on, hold on. You know, he's trying to wrestle the, the steering wheel. I'm like, at the end of the day, the steering wheel, what is that going to do? That's not going to help. You got to get your foot get his foot off the, the accelerator. I think that would have been a better move because at the end of the day, you doing all of this, you're going to crash. I mean, that's what my common sense was telling me. I don't. I guess nobody else was thinking the same way that I was thinking. So, I'm sorry guys, I have like a real sore throat today, but I'm working with it, you guys. Uh, so yeah, he's just going, 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 and then all of a sudden, it, the, the truck that they was in just flips, crashes, flips, goes up in the like it did some crazy moves so I'm like is Benny gonna be alive now like dude you don't have nine lives what the heck are you doing you just was in the hospital for how long in a coma and now you're finally out of a coma you're living your life you're about to get a house you got a new shop and this is the way you value and treat your life and cherish it like somebody give me a second chance at life I'm going to make sure I do some good with it. You know what I'm saying? Him and these vendettas. Like, boy, what are you doing? This is not smart. Let me know what you guys think down below. Be sure to comment. And like I said, like it, share it, and all that other good stuff. We will see you on the next one. Be sure to stay fabulous, live free, and soar limitless. Later.